So we've said that we have this big old state space that at every point in state space we have a change arrow. I'm just drawing three or four of them. That there's a change arrow at every point in state space given by the vector field. And we also agreed because the theorem told us that there is a unique curve here that is everywhere tangent to the change arrows. And as we said, the red curve exists. It is out there, but it is unknowable. We, we cannot deduce the formula. Now, let me say something, which is that what calculus does, if you took a calculus class, calculus is devoted to techniques for finding the formula for the red curve from the formula for the vector field. So in other words, I tell you that uh, x prime equals f of x, y, and I tell you that y prime equals g of x, y, and I want you to give me bang on f and g in such a way that you will produce a formula for the red curve. That's, what, that's the goal of calculus, is finding formulas for the red curve. There are a couple of cases, mostly linear systems, where that can be done. But in 99% of cases, it can't be done. And so the question is, you know, what's a girl to do? And the answer is provided, and this is a, the last key piece of structure, the answer is provided by an approximation method. We cannot know the red curve. Its formula is not given to us. We cannot know the red curve, but we can approximate the red curve to any degree of accuracy. And here's how we do that. The original change arrow, and I'm just going to draw this really big here. Here's the original change arrow at the point, let's say, x0, y0. And that is, of course, the change vector in the direction x0 prime, y0 prime. Now, as we said, and I'm going to draw in a portion of the red curve that's relevant right there. And as we saw, if you followed this change arrow, for one time unit, you would be right here. And you would be wrong. And you would be wrong by that much. Because here's where you are, and the red curve is where the system really is. So this distance here is your error in this approximation. So if you took a lurch forward of one time unit, one second or one hour or whenever, one time unit forward, you have missed by this much. So the idea is probably occurring to you, which is what if I don't follow it so far? What if I follow it for 0.5 time units? So then I've gone to here, and now my error is this, and this is smaller than that. So by taking a shorter lurch, I have increased the accuracy of my approximation. If I take a still shorter lurch, why, look, my error is even less. 
And so the error gets less and less. It gets smaller and smaller as the size of your lurch gets smaller and smaller. I mean, in a way, it's like asking you to pace out a circle. And I'm going to ask you to pace that out. And of course, your steps have a finite stride length. Maybe that's a yard. So if you traced out the steps of steps of a yard, you would have this multi-multi-sided polygon, each of whose lengths is one yard. Now, that's an approximation to a circle. If you needed a better approximation to a circle, take smaller steps. And if you take twice as many steps, your polygon will have twice as many sides, and it will be closer and closer to that circle. And I'm sure you can agree that you can get as close to the circle as you like by taking tinier and tinier steps. That's the idea behind this method. So now we have a method for approximating the red curve. Pick an initial condition. Consult the change arrow. Follow the change arrow for a very short time. And we're going to call that very short time delta t. We're going to follow that change arrow for a very short time. That's going to take us to a new point. At the new point, we're going to have a new x prime and a new y prime. And we're going to follow that change arrow for a very short time, the same delta t. We're going to find, take us to a new point. We're going to find the change arrow at that point. We're going to keep finding these little change arrows and following them for very short amounts of time. And that is going to produce a blue broken line consisting of straight lines, each of which is the change vector followed for a very short period of time. That's going to have the same axis as the change vector, and it's just going to be shorter. So this broken blue line is the approximation that we are going to make to the red curve. And this is called Euler's method. And uh, he doesn't like it when you call him Euler. Um, he's been dead for 300 years, but that's OK. Uh, we're going to call him Euler. And this is Euler's method. And Euler's method says, essentially, approximate the red curve by a sequence of little short straight line segments. And the lovely thing, and this is a mathematical theorem, as delta t gets smaller and smaller, the broken blue line mathematically approaches the true red curve. So there really is a, a mathematical theorem that's going to guarantee us that this little finite little tiny little steps is going to really approximate the one true curve, which exists and is out there, but we can't know it or know its formula. So Euler's method gives us a method for absolutely plotting and calculating the trajectory of any model. And by any model, I mean any model. Sharks and tuna, 57 variable models, million variable models like we do in our cardiac work. Uh, it doesn't matter. This is the method that will guarantee you an approximation to any degree of accuracy. And if you're not happy with the degree of accuracy of your method, lower delta t and take even smaller steps. So the key here is that in calculus, 
we let delta t go to zero and we try to prove theorems about the red curve. But here, we're just not going to do that. We're not going to let delta t go to zero. We're going to keep delta t very, very small, but finite.